Hey everyone, I'm sure most of you will be familiar with this quick change tool post. It's appeared in almost every video on this channel, and if you're using a lathe, it makes your life so much easier. Now, when I made this one, I didn't have a proper mill set up, so the dovetail was simply carved by hand using a file and just bolted to the aluminium housing. And surprisingly, it's a lot more rigid than a lot of you would think. It's pretty decent for about 10 bucks worth of aluminium. However, I'm machining a lot more steel than I used to, and I have a lot more tools in the workshop, so I'd really like to upgrade to a steel tool post. One of those import kits nowadays runs about 150 bucks plus $20 per tool holder, so I think I can do a lot better here in the workshop. Now that I have a proper vertical mill, I should be able to make one without much issue. I have a 50 by 50 bar of mild steel and another piece that's 50 by 20 by 200 ish. Total cost comes to about 15 bucks of steel. I've drawn up a basic design in CAD. Most of the tool posts tend to use a cam locking and piston design. However, I'd like to use a more compact screw and pin locking design. The design should be a lot simpler and quicker to make. The first thing we need to do is face the part on the top and bottom. I've ordered some carbon steel for a fly cutter, but until that arrives, I'll have to face it using some end mills. With the part faced, I can drill a centre hole for the tool post starter. We can then turn the part 90 degrees and bore the hole for the locking pin and bolt. The locking pin is 5 8 inch in diameter, and I was hoping to bore it out using this silver and deming bit. However, even with the new grind, the mill just doesn't have enough power, so it looks like it's back to the lathe to bore out the hole using some boring bars. With the part done, I gave it a quick facing to remove all the galvanising, however I wasn't really impressed with the finish, so I will need to redo it when I get the fly cutter made. Next we can make the locking pin.
The pin has a small slot cut out for the tool post stud to go through. This will certainly reduce the amount of force we can apply on the pin but I ran some tests through SolidWorks and it should stand up to all the expected loads. Finally, we can make the locking bolt. The end houses a rare earth magnet to pull the pin backwards to release the tool holder. The bolt is tightened with a small lever that will push the pin into the tool holder. Time to assemble. The pin gets inserted, followed by the stud that comes with the stock 4-way tool post. The lever gets screwed in. And the tool post is bolted down. Now we just need to make some tool holders. We'll cut the dovetails the same way that we cut them before, just the inverse.
With a good fit established, I then cut the stock into tool holder sized pieces, and it was a pretty decent workout cutting it with a hacksaw. We can then take each tool holder and face it in the mill and cut the slots for the tools. Finally, I need to make some knurled thumb screws for setting the tool height. And that's the tool holders done. The great advantage of making them in-house is they can be made to suit different tools, such as one for 20mm lathe tools and holders with offset screws for holding shorter lathe tools. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with this design and I actually prefer it to the cam locking version. It was a lot easier to make, it's very sturdy, everything fits very nicely, and it's a lot more compact than before. What can I say, I'm pretty impressed. For about 20 bucks of materials, this is a pretty decent setup. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.